Um, so one of the things that we didn't talk about yet that I think people should know is that you are definitely my pastor. Um, <laughs> I go to One LA whenever I'm in LA, and um, you all have to split time between um, One LA and Potter's House, Denver. How is how has that been for you? Do you feel like you have your routine down, or there's still some things that you feel like I want to adjust this because it doesn't feel just perfect yet or just right yet? You know what I am learning about life? The moment that you start to feel like you have a rhythm, the rhythm <laughs> comes and just is like, you know what? We're going to change the song altogether. Coronavirus. <laughs> exclusively online. It's like we just figured out a technology that would allow us to go back and forth and kind of like getting our congregations to adjust to this technology. Everyone's on board. They've adjusted to it. And now it's like, all right, now everyone's going to stay at home. And the only option you have is to watch online. Um, I think that I am kind constantly learning who I am from season to season. Mm -hmm. I think one of the greatest mistakes that we can make is longing for who we used to be in a season that is obviously changing us, obviously. but it requires like surrendering to like, who am I now? Like you had to go from being like, you know, annual right impact strategies. to now you're this CNN commentator and you're all over. And then you have to ask yourself, I'm sure you've had to ask yourself at some point, okay, this is who I was five years ago. Who am I now? Yeah. And so I am asking myself that, you know, every day, really, I think it used to be like, I could wait a few months, but because the world is changing so quickly and our response to the world has to change as quickly as the world changes to really not get lost in the pace of what's happening around me and to ask myself like who am I what do I need what does this moment require of me and do I have what it takes to stand up to it or do I need help and tools and resources so I would say that we had adjusted and now we are adjusting to you know, preaching in an empty room and allowing the online community to really build community within their own homes. How does that feel, Sarah? Like I was I was watching and I'm like, man, there's no um, like audience response. And as much as I'm definitely not a preacher, for me, the um, the thing that kind of keeps me going in a speech is like yeah. whether it's the head nod or, you know, <laughs> You know, them falling to sleep, and you're like, okay, or looking confused. Yeah. It's like, okay, that didn't make any sense. So now it's just you up there, and you just kind of got to like really trust what God gave you. It is, I think. You know, I am a conversationalist. Part of the reason why I like to kind of like tell stories and engage with people is because I get so nervous that when I feel like I'm having a conversation with people, I have less anxiety about speaking. Mm -hmm. And so I thought in a way, maybe because people weren't staring at me, that it would be easier. Then I got in the empty room and I was like, this is never going to work. <laughs> Now, what am I going to do now? Yeah. And then, um, you know, you find your rhythm and it really comes down. I tell you what it has done. It, it has made me really stand on my purpose. Like, mm -hmm. you know what you believe when you don't have anyone in the room to <laughs> applaud what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times we can play into the crowds. Like, you know, we know when they like, they like when we say X, Y, and Z. Well, when they're not there, all you have is to stand on what you believe God is telling you to say in that moment. And that's whether you're a preacher or you are defending the rights of marginalized people like we're going to know what you really believe when it is just you and whatever message that you have to share with those people and so once I got over my norm being disrupted it really brought me back to my core like the reason why you started speaking is because you believe something about God that you felt like you needed to share mm -hmm. and so rising to the occasion at the moment means doing it even when it feels awkward hey everybody thank you so much for tuning in to another edition of on one with Angela Rye masterclass I hope that you learned some, you laughed some, and you were inspired more. And you want to know how you can do that even more? You just have to subscribe. Go to youtube.com slash Angela Rye and hit subscribe. We want you to be the first to know about upcoming episodes. If there's something you want to see, if there's something you really love, or if you hated it, put that in the comments below. I hope you go easy on the hate. I'm a little sensitive.